600 to 5,000. Canna 426, turn left 060. Left turn 060, Canna 426. Canna 1127, come to 7,000. 7,000, Canna 1127. I'd like to welcome you to this tutorial, Departure from Toronto. Before we get started with our flight, I would like to point out that this tutorial focuses on pilot air traffic controller communications and is not intended to show you how to connect or fly on the VATSIM network. For that information, please refer to the VATSIM PRC on the VATSIM website. So with that out of the way, why don't we uh, move to the aircraft and begin our flight. All right, well, we're here parked at gate 165 and we're ready to begin. Uh, our flight today is uh, simulating a real-world flight from Toronto to Boston, Air Canada Flight 358. One of the most important parts of uh, flying out of the Toronto airport is getting a valid flight plan. So today we found our flight plan on the website flightaware.com and we searched for the city pair Toronto to Boston to come up with our route. Uh, you could also use the excellent flight sim website simroutes.com to find valid flight plans. Simroutes.com also provides many other features such as exports uh, to your favorite payer aircraft in the correct format. In this case, uh, the Level D 767. When working out a flight plan, it's very important to avoid using the default flight simulator flight planner or many of the other free planners you'll find on the internet. And the reason is that these flight planners tend to look for a VOR to begin your route and out of Toronto that takes you right out over the arrival corridor and creates a problem so you'll end up getting a reroute from the controller. One thing you'll notice about the flight plan is that it does not contain a SID or standard instrument departure. The reason is that we're expecting the controller who gives us our clearance today to assign a SID for our departure runway and uh, you'll see that as we uh, contact the delivery controller now and uh, ask for our IFR clearance. Toronto Delivery, Air Canada 358 requesting IFR clearance to Boston. Air Canada 358, clear to Boston, we need a left to 7 off our runway. Air 6 left, squawk 6301. Clear to Boston, Lester 7 departure, runway 06 left, squawk 6301, Air Canada 358. Air Canada 358, read back is correct, push it started at your discretion, call me your uh, Roger, we'll uh, call you for taxi, Air Canada 358. Well, today we've been given the Lester 7 departure off of runway 06 left. Now, it's very important to let the controller know if you do not have the correct chart or you do not understand the instructions given. A pilot should never accept and read back instructions that they do not understand. Well as we do have the chart, I'll pull that up now and we'll review three very important things that we need to understand about this chart. The first is that there's a climb restriction for jets of 5,000 feet and for props of 3,000 feet. The second is that we should expect radar vectors en route. This is probably the biggest area of mistakes that pilots make when departing Toronto, that they begin their turn en route before being assigned the vector by the uh, controller. The chart requires you to fly the departure heading and maintain the climb restriction or high altitude if, if provided by the controller, but to not make any turns until you've been given a vector. And finally, there is a noise abatement restriction in Toronto in that jets may not turn below 3,600 feet. Props are allowed to turn below 3,600 feet and will generally be given an initial departure heading from the tower controller. So just to show you what will happen if you file an invalid flight plan, 
I've got another flight plan here on the screen. I'm going to file that and uh, let's see what uh, the controller has to say. Air Canada 358, uh, I'm going to have to make an amendment to your flight plan. Uh, let me know when you're ready to copy. Delivery Air Canada 358, we're ready to copy. All right, Air Canada 358, uh, plan to fly direct to the Bulge intersection, then Victor 252, Wealthy intersection, check 16, the Albany VOR, then as filed. Uh, Roger, direct Bulge, then uh, Victor 252 Airway, Wealthy intersection, Jetway 16, Albany VOR, then as filed, Air Canada 358. Canada 358, Roger, I'll input the changes into your flight plan and uh, let me know when you've made the changes in your FMS and uh, we can get your IFR. Uh, delivery, Roger, we'll let you know. And just for completeness, I filed now a good flight plan but with an incorrect flight level for my direction of flight and let's take a listen to uh, what the controller will uh, do with this. Air Canada 358, uh, I'm indicating that you've fi filed for flight level 320. That's invalid for your direction of flight. I can give you flight level 310 or flight level 330. Uh, we'll take flight level 330, Air Canada 358. Air Canada 358, Roger, flight level 330. All right, well, we're all ready to go now. Before we commence our pushback, I'm just going to move to spot view and quickly look around for aircraft behind me. It's important to do because the aprons in Toronto are not controlled. So uh, please take a look around before you push your plane back and uh, request your taxi clearance. Toronto Ground, Air Canada 358, ready to taxi, runway 06 left. Air Canada 358, Toronto Ground, runway 06 left, altimeter setting 3002, taxi Alpha Lima, Bravo Delta, cross 33 right, hold short 06 left. Roger, altimeter 3002. Alpha Lima, Bravo Delta, cross runway 33 right, hold short 06 left, Air Canada 358. Air Canada Okay, we're about to cross runway 33 right. Uh, remember from our taxi clearance, we were given clearance to cross the runway, even though it's not an active runway. Just an important note that in Canada, all crossing and hold short instructions will be provided by the controller and are required to be read back. <laughs> 